of forced breath, no other fruitful river in the eye, nor the dejected behavior of the visage, together with all forms, modes, shapes of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem that they are actions that a man might play, but I have that within which passes show, these but the trappings and the suits of both. Sweet and commendable of your nature, Hamlet, to give this morning to these. Commendable of your nature, Hamlet, to give this morning to your father. 
But you must know your father lost a father. That father lost, lost his. And the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow. But to persevere in obstinate condolement is a course of envious stubbornness. Tis unmanly grief. It shows a will most incorrect to heaven, a heart unfortified, a mind impatient, an understanding simple and unschooled. For what we know must be and is as common. That's for it. Is any of the most vulgar things to sense? Why should we, in our peevish opposition, take it to heart? Why? It's a fault to heaven, a fault against the dead, a fault to nature. We pray you, though to earth, this unprevailing world, and think of us as of a father, for let the world take note. You are the most immediate to our throne, and with no less nobility of love than that which dearest father bears his son. Do I impart toward you? My only intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desire. And we beseech you, beg you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye, our chief escorted cousin and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers. I pray thee, stay with us, go not to it. I shall in all my best obey you, man. Why, this is a loving and fair reply. Be as ourself, dear Denmark. Madam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits smiling to my heart. Embrace, with us. No chalk in hell that Denmark brings today, but the great cannon of the clouds shall tell. And the king's round of heaven shall fruit again. Three speaking out the other come. This world. I want to find. Tis an unweeded garden that grows to see things rank and gross in nature. Possess it merely that it should come to this. But too much dead. Hey, not so much, not too. So excellent a king that was to this Iberian to a sadder. So loving to my mother that he might not fatigue the winds of heaven. Visit her face too roughly, heaven and earth. Must I remember why she would hang on him? as an increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on, and yet within a month! Let me not think on it, frailty, thy name is one. A little month, or ere those shoes were old, with which she followed my poor father's body, like Niobe, all tears. Why, she, even she! Oh, God, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer, married to my uncle, my father's brother, and no one like my father. Then I did Hercules within a month. Ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears, and at the blushing in her gallant eyes, she married almost wicked speed to post, with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. <laughs> It is not, nor it cannot come to good. But break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hey, your lordship, I'm glad to see you.